Dr. Travis Taylor sets the record straight about his involvement with the UAP task force. He debunks uh, Stephen Greenstreet. Basically, just an all-around great interview. Uh, an informal uh, interview over a lunch uh, during the Phenomicon. Some really wealth of information that came out of that from Travis. So let's talk about it. This is Tra this is <laughs> this is Cosmic Road, where I discuss UFOs and the paranormal. Uh, please hit like. That'd be awesome. Smash that like button. Please smash the subscribe button and the bell that is next to it to be notified of future videos. Please follow me on social media and share my posts about my newest videos. And there's social media links below, Facebook and Twitter. And uh, yeah, and comment below and let me know your thoughts as I'm going through this. Okay, so again, this is from the Phenomicon where Tra Travis Taylor sat down for a lunch in some informal gatherings, and uh, these were videotaped, thank goodness. And he has said some really interesting, thought-provoking stuff that really sets the record straight from his point of view uh, about certain matters. And from this particular get-together, uh, I think there's at least two topics that I need to address, one in this video and one in another. Uh, in this first part, he is debunking Green Street and the skeptics and the naysayers of Lou Elizondo and ATIP and people who are trying to discredit Lou uh, and ATIP. And he is also setting the record straight about his own involvement in the UAP task force. So without further ado, let's just let Travis tell it in his own words. Yeah, so um, uh, the leader of the, the guy who started all this and made it happen, uh, uh, Jay Stratton, is Jay's nickname, John's first name. Uh, but Jay uh, started this uh, with the Office of Navy Intelligence and with the DIA back in the uh, late 90s. Uh, he, as he worked through the ONI ranks, he ended up being the, uh, uh, by the early 2000s, mid 2000s, he was the, uh, uh, the equivalent civilian rank of a two-star admiral. And uh, he was running the program looking, hoping to find a nuts and bolts uh, craft. And what he was getting, what happened was uh, someone came to him with the 2004 Nimitz uh, data and uh, said, that, you know, somebody should be looking in this. And, he, and it was his job, actually, uh, his actual job was uh, threats to our airspace the Na he, with the Navy, threats to naval airspace with naval test ranges. So he started looking into it, and he was like, holy crap, they've actually got... Uh, at flare uh, footage of uh, objects. They've actually got, you know, radar data of objects. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, so he, he uh, started putting a team together, and Lou Elizondo, uh, so it was really interesting. He and Lou uh, kind of leapfrogged each other and who was running it and who wasn't. And Lou was never officially, uh, this is the way they do it in, in the Navy. And so when you see all this like Green Street and the idiots like that, yeah. they're trying to debunk everything. When they say, well, he was never, we've looked and his uh, uh, position description never says he was the leader of some UFO investigation. It was other duties as a sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was never, there was never any extra budget put there for him to go do it, but it was, it was a task that was given to him. Like when I was the chief scientist, I was a, a civil servant with the army and uh, Jay called my boss, it was his equivalent, uh, actually one star lower than Jay, but, uh, and he said, hey, I want Travis to come work for me on this task force. Would you mind loaning him to me uh, for a while? And uh, they said, why do you want Travis? Funny, uh, Jay, Jay and I talked about this because it, it was a big compliment to me, and I didn't even know him at the time. He, he, uh, he, my boss asked him, so why do you need Travis? And Jay said, because Travis knows how to build shit. <laughs> that's exactly what he told him and, and my boss laughed apparently but uh so uh jay uh then i went up my brief jay on some things that were happening at the ranch and he said yeah come in and be my uh, chief scientist there's never on paper anywhere in my position description that i was the chief scientist but when we went to the white house and to the senate select committee on intelligence Jay, a two-star admiral equivalent, introduced me to the White House chief scientist as the chief scientist of the UAPTF. And as far as I was concerned, I was good. And he told me to put it in my uh, signature bar, right? So when a two, and I was the equivalent of a, of a full bird colonel uh, as a civilian. 
And uh, so when a two star tells a colonel and puts something in their signature block, they do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so it's all, what they're doing is they're using semantics to try and debunk things. I don't even know why they yeah. need to debunk that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what, exactly. just trying to discredit things for, for no reason, which yeah. suggests that there's an imperative behind the discrediting and the debunking. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, we actually saw that in the task force. There was a group within the government that uh, uh, mm -hmm. they told us several times, it's demons and, and, and angels, y'all need to stay away from it. And they literally uh, tried to steer us away and steer funding away from us to keep us from uh, looking into it. It was really odd. I don't know. I had the same. It was the same odd thing. But what I do with the task force, so we uh, when I went in, uh, Jason, we got all this data. And the problem is, every piece of data is from a sensor on a different military piece of equipment that has a different classification. And you can't put something that's this classification on a computer that's got this other classification. And so we couldn't take something, say, from an F-35 and an F-18 and put them on the same computer to do analysis on it or from a Navy radar or and from an FAA system and put them all, there, there was no way to put all that in one system. And it took us a year just to figure out how to, how to store the things we were getting. And uh, that, that was the hardest part. But, uh, and here's the thing, while the uh, National Defense Authorization Act of 2019, 2020, 2021, and then 2022 did put in funding for the UAP task force, it never, so the way it works is uh, a committee or a, a subcommittee will put in language for the money, but the money then, uh, the, the language then has to go through the Senate Appropriations Committee. And the Appropriations Committee are the ones that actually writes the check. And it never was, it never came out of the Appropriations Committee and there was never any funding put on the UAP task force. We did all of it uh, on our own time, basically as other duties as assigned, and it was a lot of work. And I still had, you know, my day job stuff I had to do as well. And then COVID hit, so we couldn't travel. We had to do everything through a system that's called a Tanberg. It's basically a classified video conference system. It's basically like Teams or Zoom, but with, for classified. And, um, and, and you know, one of the things when we, we finished the, the first year was we are figuring out how to handle classified stuff and, and what needed to be classified and what didn't. And Jay's first priority was, look, we don't want to uh, classify things just to classify them. You know, people will have a right to know what they have a right to know. And uh, what we need to classify is anything that would give away a threat to us or give away an advantage of ours. Basically, ways and means is what we call it, or methods and, and means and, uh, uh, and technologies like we couldn't, if a F-22 videoed something on a sensor that was classified that it even existed, we certainly couldn't show that this F-22 had captured because then the Russians and the Chinese would know that we had a sensor that would do X, Y, Z. So there's a lot of that. that. That's the main reason for things being classified when it comes to the UFO stuff in this regard. Now, he goes on, but he kind of changes the subject and starts talking about other stuff. Uh, but it's fascinating. And again, I, I hope to talk more about what he says then, because in this segment, he is uh, debunking Green Street and the critics of Lou Elizondo. Uh, but in the next sec section, he is actually debunking Kevin Day and the people who say the men in black came aboard uh, in, uh, you know, during the Nimitz incident and seize the data bricks. So I think that is fascinating. I have never heard that before from anyone uh, outlining exactly what happened and maybe how you know that situation could have been misconstrued. Anyway, so I'm gonna make another segment talking about that. But in this segment, I thought it was really interesting how Travis you know, got involved uh, with the UAP task force. And I don't think he, he really uh, told the, the, the whole complete story, at least as we have heard from other sources. And maybe even uh, when he was being interviewed by the Mystery Wire, uh, that some of this came about during his involvement with Skinwalker Ranch when he detected these weird, uh, was it a radar signature? Uh, anyway, a, a strange reading 
that he believed could have been near-peer uh, adversary technology. And he went to the Pentagon and briefed them about that. And that is what began his involvement with the UAP task force. So I'm really glad that he mentioned that and was able to expound on that and to give his association with the UAP task force a little more context. It's also interesting to note that he's again talking about uh, factions opposed to UFO disclosure and what he was doing with the UAP task force and also, uh, you know, seems to generally lump in Green Street and other critics of Blue in with a whole lot. Uh, it's unclear whether in his mind that's one faction or disparate factions uh, doing the same general sort of thing. So although he has suggested that Green Street might be uh, a paid, um, you know, uh, a critic or, or debunker. Uh, I, I've, I've talked about that in a previous interview and I've, I've linked to his comments about that. And I've, I've shared his comments about that. Uh, in this video, he really um, wants to highlight that there are people within the Pentagon that are actively working against the UAP task force and the disclosure effort or the UFO study effort that is underway. And in particular, um, they are, they were at that point trying to divert funds from the UAP task force, which is pretty underhanded. It is my understanding that the UAP task force didn't have much funding to begin with. So um, it's, it's, you know, really, sinister and despicable that the opponents of this group would try to divert what funding they did have. Ultimately, I'm not happy with the UAP task force or at least with the heads of the task force and how they represented uh, the task force's efforts to Congress. They got a few things right and they made a little progress as far as the public uh, goes. Uh, you know, at least they admitted that like 143 out of the 144 cases that they studied remained, um, uh, you know, unknown. Uh, they're not going to say aliens, but they are at least saying that those are unresolved cases. That's significant, if nothing else. However, they were lying about the drones. They were lying about the Admiral Wilson leak. Uh, the one or the one actual UFO um, that they said was a UFO and not a drone that they displayed to Congress and, and the American public was like the worst possible UFO, uh, you know, footage there is or picture there is. So, um, uh, yeah, it was just a really short um, footage of this uh, tiny thing that you could barely see. Uh, and they deliberately chose that to show um, as if to show how weak the evidence is when we know from other sources like Lou that actually there's some very strong evidence that they are withholding from us. But at any rate, it's really nice to hear Travis has taken all of this and I really appreciate him taking the time to sit down with these guys and answer their questions and really give a new perspective on a lot of the things that have been going on uh, outside uh, of the general public scrutiny. I'm sure he'll have more to add and more people will chime in and flesh this picture out a little bit more. And maybe someday we'll get, you know, George Knapp involved and he'll write another book really going into more detail about that. I'm really enjoying the, the book that George Knapp co-wrote uh, about the early days of, um, you know, the government's involvement with Skinwalker Ranch and the evolving programs of ATIP and OSAP. That book, of course, is Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, which I highly encourage everybody to check out. I'm going to be talking more about that soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That'd be super awesome. And just smash that big thumbs up button. Uh, also, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, trying to grow this channel. I need your support to do it. So please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. Please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Those links are below. And when I post about a new video on Facebook or Twitter, if, if I can get the word out, uh, it would be super helpful if you would share that link. That'd be awesome. Uh, there's also a PayPal button below if you wanted to support the channel. That would be groovy. Until next time, Cosmic Road out.